hilarious. They just like pretty much anything they describe as cool is tight butthole, right? Yeah, yeah, tight totally. butthole. <laughs> tight butthole. Do, yeah. they, do they use the opposite, like? Loose they don't butthole? say loose butthole, but they will say like that is so not tight butthole. <laughs> it's, so <laughs> not it's just not butthole. tight butthole. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how all the not tight buttholes feel about that. You know. <laughs> I don't it's know. Hard, hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> hard to say. I feel like if your butthole's not tight, it's kind of intentional. Probably, you're, yeah. You're asking for it. No, Whatever no, you're doing you, in your I think you're totally unless right. You're, like, unless you're people in prison. People with a loose asshole are trying for that. <laughs> in theory. You if you're help. in prison, then it might not be intentional. Well, Good point. true, but that's unfortunate. We're not. It's you unfortunate. Know. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's intentional, then like, hell yeah. You know, guns a blazing. There you go. Could you imagine being in prison... And your prison cellmate is somebody who got arrested for something extremely violent, extremely aggressive. Like, They're like he killed four children or something like that. Like two eighty, like raped a guy, and six then like five, and he just loves people. to rape you. Ugh. I would. Uh, I've actually thought about a scenario similar to this before, and uh, I would like just your, warn your dream prison cellmate. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dream cellmate. No, for sure. But I. Uh, I don't know. How I see it is, if anybody with first day to prison, I don't know if that's a thing, like whatever <laughs> it is, day, first day yeah. to prison. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, everybody if people has are, If people are giving me weird eyes or whatever, I will let them know that even if I die in the process, if anything tries to go near my b hole, their dick's coming off. <laughs> For sure. I'm ripping that bitch off. Whatever, it's got to go down. I'll let them know. And then nobody wants their dick ripped off. <laughs> so it seems Absolutely like a good defense. Not. They're like, this yeah. fucker's crazy. Yeah. I ain't going to try to rape him. So that's my way. Well, out then of they're that. they're just gonna they're just gonna fucking dommer you and shove a broomstick up your ass. No dick to rip off then. Damn, unless I reach for it, I can try my best. I mean, I guess if I put in all but my effort. But if you're effort, on the end of a like a five foot broomstick, oh, you're not God, gonna be man. able to reach that. It's, gonna be, it's not gonna be good. But then they don't get any pleasure out of it either. I mean, I guess. Ramming, well, yeah, but I mean, like that. That's the, the, the thing. That's the thing, thing with sexual assault, right? Yeah, it's all about the dominance. It's the assertion True. of power. True, for sure. Yeah, a lot of them aren't even gay, right? They just like the yeah, dominance. Yeah, oh, totally. Well, aren't even gay. That, that's yeah. Yeah. If they're, if they're yeah. down to rape b holes, like they might be a little well, maybe we're, gay. We're off to a great start here. Oh, is, God, I'm, I'm digging this. Is this. Rough. We've been using the same one for you know, like probably the past five giveaways, um, and we just you know adjust it for like whatever we're at. But yeah, no, it is. It seems like it is a really clear format. People understand it, um, which I think is super important. You know, when you're doing a giveaway, because a lot of them you read and they're really confusing. Like, or you have it was to very do too clear. Much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The or ones where you have to follow a ton of people or do like a million different things. People don't want to have to worry about. Yeah. So I think it's important that it's simple. And yeah, we put a, like a lot of effort goes into them behind the scenes. You know, of just like like curating exactly what we're gonna give away, like the timing of when we announce it. Um, just like our page layout, the product we have available, because, you know, we convert a lot of those new followers into sales, like instantly, mm -hmm. like as wow. as it's give going on, because people come, they see our page, and, you know, if we have stuff that's available, we're posting items, we'll make the money back that we're giving away, in, you know, literally in the first couple hours of the giveaways. Wow. So um, it's, an easy, it's an easy way to look. You know, it makes it really easy to give out a lot of cool shit that people want, because we're like, well, we'll make it back, and, you know, quickly. It's a good look too. It's a good look. It's like, oh, this they care about their followers, they care about their customer base enough to give them all of this. And you guys yeah. gave out a lot of stuff for the we AK do. one. We keep adding more to Yeah, no, each one cuz I mean, we don't want them to grow stale and I feel like they have like our followers have an expectation at this point like when the giveaways come around, like go big or go home. Yeah, go big or go home. Yeah. But um yeah, just subtly like we used to just it was just jeans and then we introduced um like some apparel with it, you know. And it was like a jean jacket and jeans. But we started throwing cash in there. And obviously everybody loves yeah, that. Yeah, the cash has been, I think, the most important part for sure. That's what people care about the most, I think. Yeah, I mean, who does and I would. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, you're going to give me 100 cash. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. No fap. <laughs> TV no fap. Yeah. Isn't it no, no fap November? Wasn't that a thing last year? It's every year, dude. That's it's every year? Mm -hmm. I've heard that since like high school. Oh, right. No it was no always no shave November for me back in high school. No nut, no, no shave. What? Oh, what? There is a month where you don't shave. Yeah, it's November. So what is the, the month that you don't fap? I, I think that's November as well. Oh. So that's just a... It's all a busy month, dude. Yeah, you just grow out your facial hair and let your balls grow. <laughs> just let your balls fill up with semen. Yeah, I have not shaved my pubes in like five years. Oh, really? Yeah. I Isn't it funny how like, like pubic hair, leg hair, arm hair, chest hair... That all just grows to a certain spot, and then it's like, I'm going to chill. 
Yeah, I'm I don't just going to relax. But your, the hair on the top of your head, it's like, hey, let's just let's see how long we can grow. Mm-hmm. Let's just keep doing yeah. this thing. I don't know. I'm not a big I've never I've never shaved my armpits, never shaved my legs. I've just never been a big shaver. Well, I would hope not. <laughs> I mean, there's people that shave a lot, like NBA players shave their armpits. You know what I mean? Is Sports that right? Athletes, yeah, swimmers shave their what's, legs. What's the utility in like less sweat? I think I don't know. Oh, for so swimming, like, is it like yeah, arm it's, mobility? It's for well, I get swimming. That makes sense. But like basketball players, I think it's just kind of maybe a sweat reducer of some sort. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I've never heard that before. Or, yeah. I, I love that advice, not listening listening and actually processing what they're saying mm-hmm. instead of listening to respond. Yeah, I, I think of it more of a respect thing. Um, not trying to, like, because, like, if somebody's talking to you, they're trying to share what they care about, what they feel. They're, they're trying to, like, send a message. So I just think it's only out of respect that I'm going to hold off my thoughts and just listen to what you have to say so that I can possibly even learn something. Whereas opposed to somebody's like just talking my ear off and I'm just trying to comment back to like make the conversation cooler or better. So you're trying to like, you're not trying to like have a de- deep conversation. You're just trying to build on what the other person is say and like try and one up them. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like at, like I wasn't bar. listening to a word you just said. Really? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. And there are people that are very selfish, like intentionally selfish, or maybe not even intentionally. They don't even realize that they are being selfish with the conversation, but they always find a way to draw it back to them. Yeah, Or they, they find a way to draw the conversation to wherever they want to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of like uh, the bar conversation. My dog gets out, and I'm like, God damn it. Anyways, it's not a big deal because he always comes back huge storm rolls in right and he's out in the woods and this storm is just deadly like Mm -hmm. pouring rain lightning everything and i'm like dude this is not good like no way he's gonna be able to find his way back because sins get thrown off and stuff anyway so i'm freaking is that how dogs get back like they navigate by scent really i think that's definitely a big thing wow that's impressive i never knew that i mean i don't want to say you have to because i don't think that they've been out enough to know like where the house is so scent Mm -hmm. yeah and how many friggin' I don't even know what it's called, but like uh, receptors in their nose they have is like unbelievable. So like picking up a scent is not a big deal at all. Anyways, so I knew it was bad because the rain came in. So I go out and I'm looking for my dog for like an hour or two through the woods, just trekking. I'm muddy, I'm wet. I'm like, oh, this is not good. But I was staying positive, right? Optimism, huge thing. Anyways, I finally called my my mom and I'm like, hey, Oliver got out. I'm like he's not coming back. And she's like, all right, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay whole day goes by never happened before at this point it's panic it's me my mom my sister my dad we all made flyers put them all over the area all Mm -hmm. over nothing for another day finally we get a call two days later and it's like hey i found your dog um i had to take him to the vet because my dog actually ended up attacking him and my dog is not vicious at all like you come up to him he rolls over on his back and wants to get played and that's what happened so this dog came over and like mauled him from like his waist and just yeah so and then he was still alive though so that's why she took him to the vet but they had to put him down because there was no saving him so it was just terrible you think that's what happened like he he kind of almost submitted it was like like being playful not playful just nervous it was nervous playful anything he would like you said would submit and just roll right to his back and just be like don't hurt me or tickle me Uh and that's what i'm saying because apparently his stomach was just like obliterated which I mean, it sucks, but I almost That's don't. very unheard of. Yeah. Like, for another dog to be that violent. That just doesn't sound like, I don't know. It's I, like yeah, I, I can't stand hearing stories like that, that a dog could do that, or you've raised a dog or not raised a dog properly to attack something else that isn't trying to, like, be dominant. Because, like, yeah, I know wolves will do that. Like, they'll they'll fight, and then the other one will roll and expose its neck to the other, and it's like a dominance act. And then the, like, almost wolf etiquette mm-hmm. is to let the other wolf live. And that's, that's, uh, and then they, they walk away and, like, one's, like, considered, like, more dominant and then the other one. Right. But they, they figured that out through, like, physical yeah, altercation. Yeah, well, that wasn't the case. But, anyway, so the saddest part, so obviously that's all sad. Anyway, so we went and picked, uh, his name's Oliver, up, put him in, wrapped him up in a blanket and, like, I, it wasn't a shoe box, but it was some sort of box because we buried him at my house. But we had to show my other dog, and they're, like, best friends, like, 
sorry, like, your brother just died. So we opened the box and let my other dog come up and, like, understand, like, what had happened with death. And that was so sad seeing my other dog, like, go up and trying to be like, hey, like, why aren't you moving? So that Do you think was, dogs can conceptualize the fact of death? Uh, like, their own mortality? But I, I maybe not their own mortality because that's, like, a self-awareness thing. Mm-hmm. But are they able to conceptualize that another dog is passed or that their, their owner is passed? I'm sure we could find a lot of research behind that. Personally, I don't know. If I had to make an assumption, yeah, I think so. You think your dog could tell? Like, just that specific instance you yeah, thought? Yeah, I've seen, I mean, mother dogs. Like, I saw a video on Facebook the other day where uh, it was, like, an earthquake, and this dog had puppies, and all of his puppies were under all the rubble. And he went and got somebody, or the mom went and got somebody and was, like, right here and was, like, digging until the humans, like, went over there and, like, got all their puppies out. So, instinctively, yeah, they they have instincts like any other, I think, living creature. Mm-hmm. I'd say yeah. I don't know. I'd say yeah, but I don't know enough about it to, like, make a logical. I would guess yes as well. Mm-hmm. There's already, like, a communicational, technological, like, cultural gap. You know, really? like in the way that you think about like between like people our age and our parents, you know, where it's like they just don't get it kind of attitude. And like I totally get the same sense with people who are born in like fucking 97 and 98, you know, that's only three or four years younger than us. Yeah, But for there's sure. such a gap and like a lot of them are on like such a different, more involved social it's media meme yeah. type culture that like you know it's already to the point where like they're making references to stuff and like you know even as much as just like using text slang and and abbreviations and stuff i was like what the Mm -hmm. is this that is crazy to think about it's almost difficult to communicate with this person because that we're you know they're referencing things and like the the memes (laughs) and the the language and everything is so embedded in their communication style Mm. that are just like you're just like, I don't even know. Yeah, it's bizarre. That's funny. Yeah. And even us, like, we're a little bit quicker paced than somebody five years older than us. Oh, totally. It's crazy how much yeah. there's probably more of a gap I mean, I don't within know. five I, years than I feel any like point I in sense, human history. I feel like I sense less of a gap between, you know, us, like, 24, 25 year olds and 30 year olds than I do between myself and, like, a 20 or like 19 year old do you think that has to do with your frame of reference being the older individual maybe because your analysis maybe. might but they I, might feel the same way i also feel like maybe it's been a more recent thing but i feel like you know very rapidly within the past few years kids are getting technology earlier oh you know for sure because yeah. it's just so you know rapidly New shit's coming out exponentially then, faster yeah. like stuff is becoming more widespread and technology is more affordable, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, me and a 30-year-old, like, that 30-year-old probably got their first cell phone when they were, like, you know, junior high, early high school, something like that. Yeah. About the same as me. You know, someone who was born in 98 to 2000, you know, that range, they had a phone in their, or an iPad in their hands from the time they were, like, you know, eight to ten years old mm-hmm. it's wild yeah that number that age is just gonna keep dropping yeah so i i think that that has a big thing to do with it you know for sure um, just more people, access yeah to everything. yeah people who are four or five years younger than us um have been exposed to this kind of immersive technology for you know maybe like six to eight years longer mm-hmm. than us yeah you know something that Two things that come to mind that our generation does not have, we're kind of impartial to, some people are kind of into it, but not that many. Like, most are in the minority. One being YouTubers, because people five years younger than us, they are bananas, man. They are bananas about this YouTube craze. Mm. Mm. And then TikTok as well. That's another social media platform that all those kids, like, a few years younger than us, Yeah, it's it's crazy to me. Like, I I know nothing about TikTok, except that their ads are so fucking annoying. I only know it. I just, like, I want to get rid of them. (laughs) Snapchat, they always throw ads for Snapchat and Instagram primarily. I only know, like, a handful of people that have TikTok, I feel. Unless a lot of people are just trying to tell me I don't think I even, like, if I do have friends who like have and use TikTok, Very I don't few. know them. I don't I know. know who it is. They well, don't talk about it. It's Snapchat funny because a few days ago in one of my classes, 
uh, that we we got on the topic of TikTok and from like a marketing point of view. Mm-hmm. And the entire class, like he he asked the question, "Do any of you guys have TikTok?" And not a single person raised their hand, whether they didn't want to admit it because they would be in the minority. It, I mean, that's possible, but not a single person in that classroom had mm-hmm. TikTok. I guarantee, if you were to go back five years younger, so even just freshman in college, freshman oh. in college. Or maybe like senior I, yeah, in I high bet school. That number was exponentially I, larger. I bet it's at least. I bet it. I, I don't know, but yeah, I bet maybe <laughs> half the class. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's super interesting. Now I know that you used to be big into Vine. Mm-hmm. So like, are have you familiarized yeah. uh, yourself with TikTok at all? Like, do you know how they compare? Because um, like, they I seem don't know like, much TikTok about it. Seems like, like there's way more uh, effects and stuff you can do with TikTok. At oh, least okay, at least from okay. what I've seen, like. So right. a lot. It's funny because a lot of TikToks they advertise like on Snapchat. It's funny. I would always see those and be like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's mm-hmm. not that good or whatever. And then I have a friend that actually showed me some of the TikToks she made, and they were like super cool. Like they were actually really cool. And I was just like, why are they advertising all the shitty TikToks? Like they're yeah. not that special. <laughs> it's like whatever. And then uh, and some of the TikToks are really annoying. Like. Uh, you know what I'm talking about on Snapchat where uh, there will be like a girl and a sign like "Sorry boys," but and it's like yeah, 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 yeah. walk away na, na, yeah. na, 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 that song or whatever, and then like there's like ten variations of that mm. that they would advertise. And I was like, mm-hmm. what? And after I saw my friend's TikToks, which were actually really cool and the effects that she did and stuff, okay, I was just like, you know, why are they advertising all the really ones that aren't impressive yeah. at all? They're really yeah. not impressive yeah. at all. Corny, corny. But some of the TikToks can be really cool. Um, it seems like there's way more effects than Vine, um, but I also I, don't know where Vine is right but now. I, I worked at Chick Fil A for almost a year, dude. And it's so much better than this. Chicken thank sandwich. you. What do you mean? Dude, thank I, you. I walked out. Dude, thank did you. I tell you that. Thank you. You're welcome. Say it. Thank you. Oh, you mean my pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no. The phrase is my pleasure, not thank you. But well, you have to say my pleasure in response to uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Go. So, okay, so go ahead. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. But I would never say it. I worked in the back. Oh, I was, okay. I was prepping the salads for the watch. So you weren't brainwashed moms. like those those fucking cashiers. Yeah, man. It's it's it is brainwashing, dude. We watched one of the training videos that we watched was like, you never know who's gonna come in next you know and it was like a video like a little girl walks in the screen pauses and the words say uh, mom died bl- uh, dad blames her you know what i mean just kind of like provoke us to just be super understanding and like super friendly i'm just like dude that's never gonna happen like, <laughs> <laughs> if i all just died like i don't think i would be going to chick-fil-a you know i mean obviously you have to eat but still i don't know <laughs> that's a pretty extreme example i know dude it was just it was definitely it, even when I quit, dude, it was like there was nothing. Like you know what I mean? He was so nice. He's like, "Oh, I understand." I'm just like, "You can be mad, dude." And I, you're I like, I "Thank you." And he's like, "My pleasure." <laughs> I literally walked out, dude, and he was super chill. You walked out? Mm-hmm. I was just, I was done with it, dude. Because there's like, I don't know if it was like a pride thing, but like the managers there are like 18 years old, or like the leaders they call them, but basically are the were you managers. older than them? Yeah, he's like 18. He's like, <laughs> they call yeah. them leaders. Yeah, leaders. <laughs> they don't call team, them managers. No, like team leaders, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself like in those situations where like you cannot keep yourself awake no matter? I did. What? I've only fallen asleep a few times in class, and I did no yesterday. Way. Literally yesterday, I fell asleep. Oh my gosh. I yes. was just out, and I woke up 30 minutes later. And I checked the time. I'm like, wow, I literally just slept. It's had cool. a dream and everything. Like yeah. I felt, I felt a lot better whenever I woke up. Really. Yeah, like more focused and whatnot. Maybe yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not the, like the big nap guy, so maybe maybe I should take a little more naps. I don't know. I was just like that that stasis, like that but boredom is horrible. I hate that. That's not that's got to be like the worst that thing ever. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I um, read in a book one time that apparently if you sleep six hours at night and then take a one hour nap during the day. Okay. I don't know if there's any scientific backing mm-hmm. for this, but then apparently you will be able to be like you're it's pretty much trying to like life hack like a little life hack so that you can cut mm-hmm. one hour off of your sleep and then you get an extra hour out of your day basically that's fair that's fair i've been having a really hard time finding like my happy medium with my sleep schedule because it's been super bad this semester like depending on whatever i'm doing it's like i've been i've been more of like the six hour the six hour sleep schedule six to seven with like that little 30 to an hour minute nap okay and it's been it's been kind of cool. I've uh, 
I haven't felt as like tired throughout my day. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I absolutely. Like that being like lethargic. So I think I think that hour nap might be uh, a lot more important than you may think. Part of me wishes we could go back to whenever whenever it was. Mm-hmm. I, I I think this is a Twitter fact I read, but pretty much sleeping four hours a night. Have you ever heard that? Four hours a night and then sleeping four hours during the day. Okay. That's like apparently how our ancestors lived. Yeah, the the nomadic uh, lifestyle, which is interesting. It is. It definitely. It definitely is interesting. Um, I think that also can go back to like nutrition. Mm. Um, I don't. I think maybe they were sleeping in like more blocks. Maybe like a combination of things like safety, um, and like not having like a good place to sleep. Like you're sleeping on rocks and dirt and stuff. So I, I don't think you're getting like sound sleeps. And then third, like nutrition, whereas you, I don't think you'd be like as, I think you'd be like mentally out of it, like not having like the right nut- nutrients and it's like so and so forth. So like you're getting like these micro sleeps and then like you're waking. <laughs> like that was kind of scared me a little bit. And then like you might not be uh, as like as into it. I don't, I don't know. I can't think of like the right way to, to phrase what I'm trying to say, but maybe maybe their sleep schedule had a little bit more to do with like their everyday life okay rather than like what would be best for your sleep schedule absolutely okay and that's how they adapted and whatnot yeah yeah i wonder i wonder because that's definitely i mean i feel like it's a cultural thing at least now why we sleep eight hours a night Mm -hmm. but also it doesn't make sense that i don't know most other things like most other creatures they sleep just one prolonged period at night or during the day Mm -hmm. and then they wake up during the day and then they go at it yeah i don't i don't really have any knowledge on how any other animals like sleep so i can't really i can't apparently dolphins sleep with half of their brain on you know what one like the left hemisphere will stay on and then the other the right sleeps which is crazy i think that is okay so when okay so going back to like the uh, like ancient like civilizations and tribes and so on they they didn't have REM sleep. So, okay, okay, you know what? That's what I was trying to get to. So those block four-hour sleeps, Mm -hmm. they're not getting that REM sleep because, so, okay, so it's also on the same fact if, like, you, if you smoke weed before you go to bed, it it kind of is like putting a sheath over your brain. It's like a protective sheath, right? So your, it, your brain thinks it's in this, uh, this, in this area where it's not safe, right? So Mm. it's like, it's like technically not asleep, but it's like asleep. So it's in like this uh, protective mode to where like you can be woken up very easily. So like the back in the day, they would go into REM sleep. Whereas if there was like somebody going to attack their, their uh, civilization or like there was animals and they were going to like get harmed or whatever. I think that, I think that's the same thing with dolphins in the ocean where they always have to be uh, like uh, hyper aware alert alert yes that's a perfect way to put it they have to be alert of their surroundings and their situation because they could always be uh, put in danger so they have to be able to shock themselves out of sleep I think so they could wake up to like full consciousness and yeah. ca- in case they need to have flight or flight or something like that yeah because if you ever notice if you get woken up in the middle of your sleep and you're super just you're kind of like out of it and you dazed help, you're in REM sleep so it takes you a little while to get back into it as far as humans go, how what what is the REM sleep cycle? I always heard it was like two hours. You know, like they're like the I think it's five stages it's of sleep. About, it's, it's like every three hours. Three so hours, okay. It's like, it's, like, it's like right every three hours. So that's why they try and do the six hour sleeps, right? So you, it's okay. So it's like a third of your sleep. It's like, it's something with like a third or a th- like three hours like into your sleep. It's something with like that three, mm. but it's like at the end of your sleep, and it's like this short burst. Uh, and so I think that's why they try and do like the, the six hour sleeps because you're getting like two REM sleeps. Okay. Cause, like, you'll go through like these peaks and valleys in your sleep. And so I, I, I that's gotta be, that's gotta be like, that's, that's gotta be. Sleep, sleep is extremely interesting. Yeah. It's, it's so weird. It's really weird. I always try and watch some videos on, uh, like people trying to like, understand sleep or like perceive like why we dream or whatever. And that's always really cool. It's so interpretive. Like yeah. The entire science behind it is so interpretive. Oh, yeah. Even, like, some people say that, uh, like, what you're dreaming is uh, the exact – it's it's like how your ego or your id is, like, perceiving reality or, like, 
your subconscious like overlays of like what you want to be happening in your life or like what's affecting you. Oh wow. Yeah. It's, so, so why did my parents die last night? Really? No, like it, like no, in my no, dream. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, that's no. really weird. No, no, that didn't happen. Oh, okay. But no, actually, I did wake up. I woke up crying, which is weird. How much you feel your dreams emotionally? Yes. You so do. interconnected. It but, is. but I yeah, I woke up crying the other night to my grandparents no. passing away. No way. So it's almost like. I don't know. It's like I'm like anticipating their death, or maybe maybe myself feeling guilty because I don't really call them as much as I probably should, yeah. considering how close we are. But yeah. Do you think it could possibly have something to do with, uh, like, say, say like you're going to go to bed like super anxious or like upset? Do you think that would have like a big impact on like how you're dreaming, and like the dreams that you have? Wait, so ask that again. Um, so. You said if I go to bed state, upset? The mental state that you go to bed in, do uh-huh. you think that maybe has an effect on like how you dream? I bet so. I would say so. But we uh, started throwing stuff on there, just jeans. Like, we'd cut them up and mess them up, you know, like to stress them and post them. And it was like the response was crazy. Like, it was overwhelming how, like, high the demand was for this. So you guys kind of are just doing this for fun. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, so yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I'd always, you know, work, like, three, four jobs at a time just to, you know, make <laughs> – just to pay for like my shitty car or whatever, you know, just to mm-hmm. eat food and everything. Like we both, she needed a job and I was working part time. Yeah, and this was all within the first week of coming here. Yeah. So I mean, like, like it the first, fast. yeah, because <laughs> she came like straight out of high school, in Missouri State. Mm-hmm. I transferred from you know a junior college, so it was both our first year here. Okay. Even though I was two years ahead of her, but yeah, within the first couple of weeks of school or living here, we, you know, we were already like stumbled upon a business. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. No, it was a, it was a really cool. Um, just a really cool way to break in Springfield for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, so we were starting to post them, and everybody, you know, there was this huge demand, and we were making money. People were coming by our apartment just right off campus. And, every um, night. Every <laughs> night, <laughs> every which we night. which was, like, against our lease, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> people were just coming in in packs, you know, groups of people together, and, like, we didn't know anyone, and just, like. Are they, are they drug dealing up there? Yeah, right. No, no, no we're, we're still yeah, in jeans, yeah, I literally, swear. You know, yeah, um, my, my mom and people would make jokes like that. Like, people, you're gonna, people are going to think you're selling drugs. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, fuck them. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, they, sc- like, were buying us out, and we were making all this money, you know, and people were, like, paying us cash, and it was so cool, like, you know, making money for yourself is just, like, it's just, an, it's, it's so much different, you know, than when you got working for a job or something like that, like, mm-hmm. knowing that you actually made it, it's, it's, it's cool, it was, like, addicting, really, I mean, it is, and um, it changed our whole lives, like, from right from the start, it, mm-hmm. and it gave us, like, a purpose, you know, which was something we were kind of looking for in a new town, a new school, and everything, so, mm-hmm. More. Cause you used to be, you used to have a lot of followers on Vine, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I reached uh, like viral 40k, status. and then yeah, I had that's like a lot of people. 10 million <laughs> loops, something like that. Oh 10 God. million loops. Jeez. That's nuts. <laughs> that's a lot. That's, of a, that's views, a crazy man. number to ponder. Yeah. One 10 million. Things, yeah. One sure. Vine got half of those loops, though. I remember it, you telling actually, me that, which yeah. Vine was. What, what did yeah, you do? what was that so video? What I was going for. I don't even think it was my funniest. Like I don't think it was my most creative or funniest. But yeah. I remember waking up one day and I was like, my hair is everywhere. And I was kind of going for the appeal, and I this is not my favorite sense of humor, mm-hmm. but I was going for relatability on a, a myriad of, of levels, I guess you'd say. Yeah. So I found two songs that were in pop culture at the time, really all over the radio and whatnot, and then I, oh, what was it? Oh, then I related it to people going to school because I, I'm like, okay, this is going to relate to a massive amount of people. Mm-hmm. So... Oh, what was the vine? It was in the beginning of the semester versus the end of the semester. And the very beginning of the semester, I'm like, I got my hair like combed and um I I think I had like a nicer shirt on and I'm being very attentive, like pretending right, to right. like write down. And then it's it was that Rihanna song. It's like work, 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 work. <laughs> uh-huh. And then um Yeah, I believe that song is called Work. Is it? I, I, think you're right. <laughs> I actually I have a conspiracy Blake. theory about that song, by oh, the way. Oh shit! But uh, oh, lordy. <laughs> but and then I did like some Alessia Cara song. I was like, and I ask myself, what am I doing here? And then I <laughs> and then I looked for like a dramatic exit to like finish off the vine with like some humor appeal. Mm-hmm. Even though I personally didn't find it like hilarious, I just thought it was like an equation yeah. that would maybe yeah. work. Relatable and, um, to everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Relatable in pop culture. Relatable in the aspect that. This and, is how a lot of and, people feel about their attitude towards school. Yeah, and I feel like it also appeals to, like, the largest user group of the platform. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also, uh, so the the way I got it to go viral is I 
I, yeah, that was the equation I was going for. That was the appeal. And and then like the the ending, I like slam my head on the table and my hair's all messy and stuff. Mm-hmm. And gotcha, it's it's kind of yeah. like symbolizes like you're on top of your shit at the beginning of the semester and then at the end of the oh, semester. Oh, for sure. And by the like, end, you're fucking you, no you're motivation. Run and you're just like trying to make it to the end. Exactly. Yeah. And that one caught on big. Huh? But uh, yeah. what I did is I I found I got a big list of like Twitter accounts and I sent it into like ten of them. Uh, just some pretty popular accounts and what these Twitter accounts are looking for is content. Like they're looking mm-hmm. for constant content. So I was like, maybe I'll just send it in and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it was like my first time trying it, but I sent it in to like 10 accounts. One of them posted and then all the other accounts started stealing it because they saw it performing uh, well. Oh, shit. Yeah. And it was like also at a very relatable time in the semester. So um, I think it was like end of the semester. So it was like extremely prevalent so everybody was retweeting and favoriting and whatnot. And then mm-hmm. that post yeah. alone got up to like 5 million loops. And then it got Damn. posted on Facebook Jeez. on some account that hit like 500,000. And I'd like every once in a while, people will tag me in it too. At like on Instagram or something like some popular Instagram account will post it. But it's cool, man. Like I, yeah. I, yeah. there's this shirt ha- that I have. Have you ever had anyone come up to you like in public and just be like, you're the Vine guy? It or used like, to happen on campus at Missouri State. Really? Like, I could see that. I think in, it, the, there were like two semesters where I was known as like the Vine guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. And I think it within those two semesters, maybe like 10 people on campus, mm-hmm. like like more yeah. than I ever would have anticipated. Did you get any pay from Vine? When yeah, I made like $400 through like some- That's No out, shit. Yeah. Like uh, in a certain was, month or like the whole Some time, advertiser or? hit me up and they were wanting me to do advertisements. Mm-hmm. And I think it was like- hundred dollars oh, what was it i think it was two hundred dollars for the initial fifty thousand loops and then every thirty thousand loops after that was a hundred and i got it up to like a hundred eighty thousand nice. loops cool. or something like that oh, yeah wow. that's great that's yeah pretty sweet have you ever uh do you have a you have a youtube don't you or do yeah you know? yeah do you have you ever made money off of youtube or not Monetizing YouTube has gotten a lot it's more trickier, difficult right yeah because yeah. it used to be about used two dollars every thousand views something roughly like uh-huh. that uh, now you have to have you have to hit a requirement, and it's I think it's revolves around watch time, and it's monthly watch so time they, or yearly they have watch to time. Watch, like, oh, oh, okay, it's that's like different. forty thousand hours or something within mm. a year, or something mm. like that. I didn't know because I know with like music streaming platforms, you know, like on Spotify, you only have to listen through like the first thirty seconds of a song for the artist to get the full royalty. Oh, for that song. So I thought that's what you meant, like you know. If someone watches the first 60 seconds or whatever of your video, you're going to get the full, like, the royalty as if they had watched the full video. Mm-hmm. That would be ideal. That'd be nice. <laughs> but, no, it's like a, yeah. it's kind of like a prereq almost. So you have to gotcha. have this amount of watch time within a year's time span. Before you can monetize. Yes. So, like, you can't monetize whatsoever okay. yeah, yeah. until you reach this threshold. And mm. then you, then all the additional views you get on top of that, that's yeah. when you start making money. Right on. And you have to have, like, a 1,000 subscribers as well. Yeah. It didn't used mm. to always be that way. But yeah, I remember yeah, it's gotten a lot. Is. Well, again, it's like, like as it's grown, they have to regulate it more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they're like, everybody can just hop on it. Right, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. And like months. we were talking about, fucking everybody wants to be a YouTuber now. Everybody really does. Yeah. Everybody I got in the younger but generation, would, too. You know, being a YouTuber would be sweet. Yeah. You got to do is make <laughs> yeah, videos. Yeah, like a sweet gig. I just don't feel like doing that. Yeah. I don't know too many people our age that are, like, all about, like, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber. But it's just, just a like little bit saying, younger. Five right. years younger. Literally, yeah, yeah. Four, three to five years younger. Yeah, they're and they're all, all about it. Be very and, like, it, yeah. it's almost a semi-viable career <laughs> path. Oh, it, yeah, no, it absolutely is. If yeah. you find your own little, you know, your own little niche that... Yep. That you got going that yep. nobody else has really hopped on as big. Yeah. Even if people really, have I like, guess it's different like I guess it really doesn't take that many people. Like if you can develop a small but very loyal following that you're good. You're yeah. good. Then it'll just take off. Yeah. More people will hear about and you. And it is it's and it's so crazy base. the stuff that is becoming viable and like how weird and pretty much everything it gets. Yeah. Pretty much everything. You, In a weird way, it's like the, the big thing, like you know what I mean? It's that, like life can't exist without death. This is true, unless we digitize our consciousness at the end of it all. Who knows? I've seen some horrible movies, man. One of those was with Johnny Depp. I don't know if you're. I don't remember the, the movie, but he did that. And oh, he put, like puts his in the movie. Yeah, he his he, like consciousness. Mm. Oh, I'm just like Black man. Mirror. 
rotates around that premise a lot. What a show, dude. That's that is a show. fantastic show. I need to... Dude, how am I watching an episode tonight? It's def- It gives you a weird aftertaste. You're just like, yeah, the fact that's a possibility what I just saw. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, but definitely good, good show. I feel like it's it's almost like a either this reality or like a dystopian interpretation of the future with just implementing some form of technology that's going to just create a whole new world and. I don't know, it, it, that hypothetical is really appealing, but also scary as fuck. Yeah. Because it, we just, it, it's kind of poetic how it makes us realize some weird facet of humanity, you know what I mean? Like, our obsession with technology and judging each other through it, you know, and being obsessed with likes, you know. You're talking about that one episode yeah, specifically? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah that episode, in, but it's kind of like, the whole show is like a technologically advanced society which we're just, we're basically there, you know what I mean? And it kind of surrounds it, the show surrounds it with that and shows us how, like, it's basically the doom of, of uh, humanity's technology. Those are the scariest episodes, too. Yeah. Like, the ones that make you think the most are the ones that are, that seem to be so similar to this reality mm-hmm. in, like, modern day, modern culture, but they just put one little twist. Yeah. Just add like one part of technology like that going back to the one with the likes it's almost like social media just taking to a whole new extreme Mm -hmm. and but it's it's very similar to like what this world is like at this point in time right it's they always say if you have self-image of issues don't go on instagram because it just everybody's having the best day of their life on instagram you know what i mean so then nobody's gonna post a picture of them crying because they're insecure or something you know i mean like the real they're, they're you don't see the real stuff and, and you can't blame them you want to yeah. be perceived in a positive light myself included yeah but yeah i mean everybody has instagram i'm not dogging it but it's just kind of the dark truth i feel like that's the number one critique of instagram is that it's like a like a highlight reel of your life and then you're going to be comparing yourself and then I will say, if you're looking for validation on Instagram, you're looking in the wrong spot. Yeah. Because that can get addictive, and that's looking externally for some internal solution, and that's just insatiable, and it's it's like a bottomless pit. It's a bottomless pit. You're always going to want more and more and more and more and more, and I don't know, that validation is probably going to dissipate. That's what we all want, though, isn't it? Validation. I mean, whether it's in some from somebody else or something, you know? I was watching some video and somebody was talking about like energy flow, like the flow of time. And so like how if uh, if a task is not demanding enough, then you're bored and you are thinking about your next task or if something is too engaging, then it brings like stress and anxiety. But you got, you got to like find that like right middle ground. And so I think that uh, it's really so I, I find I noticed this with my calculus class because it can be. Uh, Sometimes it can be so overstimulating that it takes me out of the moment and it take and it like overwhelming. Like, yeah. And so things like drudge on even longer. Like it makes like the 50 minute class seem like hours and hours. Cause like you're just like, you're so overstimulated. And so you get like this like weird anxiety. And so like everything is just like so much slower. And so I try and think about like, like that energy flow and going back to that and trying to like, calm everything down mm. and so like going back to like, so like boring stuff trying to make sure that you are uh i try and like over engage myself if i find myself really bored like sleeping in class so i'll like really pay attention to what the teacher's saying or also like writing stuff down to like try and get back to that energy flow where time like is like moving a lot faster throughout those like really boring classes mm. so i think that's like really hard to do it's difficult I always walk up and I put my three middle fingers down the shirt and I like move just it up like and down. you were ramming your three middle fingers down your throat just before we started rolling. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> call it we, can, we can see this again. This is the Gogatron three thousand right here. I almost puked last time. I, I had a gag reflex. <laughs> yeah, just had a gag you know, some guys are into that. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, not not back with the rape topic, please. <laughs> no. no, let's 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 direct ourselves away from that. <laughs>
Yeah, we can't <laughs> spend the entire podcast just talking about prison rape. No, no. <laughs> Let's not bad, do that. Bad look. We Let's don't reflect that. on yeah, JSP that way. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for respecting the pod. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Three fingers down the throat. I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm doing it. I think I'm turning on That's a little bit. That's the Gogatron 3000, and I'm not doing the, it wait, again. Wait, the Gogatron? You saw it. The Gogatron. <laughs> the camera saw it. It's on video for one time and yeah, one time only. This, this is out there. That, like, that is a, a record of you doing that. Yeah. That's going to be yeah, held I mean, over I've your head forever. Have you done that in any, any other podcasts? Have you stuck? No. No, that is a first. There you go. That's that a, is first. a first. The Gogatron. It sounds like a... Either in Transformers or like the Gorgonites from you guys remember the little Army Men movie with the, the real Army no. Men? No, no, like little soldiers or toy soldiers. Oh or something. shit! No, dude, I saw that a once. Dude gets stuck in the uh, yeah, dude. It, stuck it, in the yeah, it was like all like little kid disposal. toys, but it was fucking brutal. It, it, like it, it was I a always thought show. when I was a little kid, I remember feeling like it was like rougher than your average dude, kids totally. movie. Totally, yeah. Sure. When I was a little kid, it kind of scared the shit out of yeah, me. Yeah, it was a little bit scary. Yeah, yeah. When I watched yeah, it, now, it was a little brutal. It's nothing, but like it's yeah. Right, I, I right. remember feeling kind of like slightly weird about it when I was yeah. like wee laddie. Yeah. Just like uh, uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Dude. I actually loved Courage when I was a little kid, but now that I watch it when I'm older, I'm like, that shit is fucked up. Yeah, dude, I was <laughs> never allowed to watch that show as a kid. Really? Yeah, really. really. Were you allowed to watch SpongeBob? No, uh, I like chose not to. I just like wasn't really. I mean, I understand. Wasn't that. really into. It. I wasn't allowed to watch SpongeBob. <laughs> I know really? so many I people that weren't years allowed. Later. Like yeah, years sure. later, I was like, there were a lot of jokes that went over my head back <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah, I just like I never really enjoyed it. But like Spongebob's I enjoy great. it, I enjoy it more now than I ever you did should, yeah. as a kid. It's Honestly, wonderful. same. Yeah, same. But no, I like I was never allowed to watch. Like my parents were really strict about my language, so like I wasn't allowed to watch anything that said butt or like crap even, even or butt? stuff like that. Yeah. You know, of operating, we uh, started shipping out orders. Um, our very first person that wanted to buy from us, you know, that wasn't here locally, was in Canada. Um, so we were like blown away. We we're like, mm -hmm. what the? Well, like, how did we like? You know, how'd you find about here? How, how'd you hear of us? Um, and it just started to grow. From, you know, from there, people like, as we like made it clear that we s like shipping is an option. You know, um, it's like probably probably half of our orders now mm -hmm. are shipped. Oh, very cool. Yeah, very cool. so a pretty high percentage of it. And um, other than that, you know, people can do local pickup, which is the easiest. You know, if you're around in the area, we've had people that. have <laughs> Not wanted to spend the seven dollars shipping charge or five dollars shipping yeah, charge. Yeah, even five dollars and drive like an hour. Drive to an hour to come pick up there. Really? <laughs> yeah, because they don't want to wait on shipping. Because um, it's part of the experience. Yeah, it's yeah. part of the experience. I mean, we're fine with it. We just like yeah. to let them know, you know, like we can ship it if you want. Uh huh. But yeah, no, I mean, um, we have to do a ton of shipping with our orders, so ton it's been. Uh, yeah, and I mean, we've dabbled around with a website before, um, uh, for a few months, and I mean, it, we just weren't ready for it yet. Uh, but yeah, no, we shipped orders through there. And I mean, it, it is it's scalable to that aspect. We've gotten it down, you know, with just our processes of um, getting people's, you know, information and printing it out and making it a pretty easy uh, and fun packaging. That's a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get like I got Halloween packaging and it seems to be a big hit. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So um, I would never have thought of that. Yeah. That's that's creative. Yeah. People people seem to love it. Um, it gets people to repost it when they get their package and they're like, oh, like cute packaging. Love my new shirt. And then they post it on their story. So that is a nice like it's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. I don't you guys yeah. know Belle Delphine? No. Yeah. She's, you do. Yeah. Yeah. She's like. You know, she was a, like a gamer, anime yeah, type yeah. chick, so she, and then she, she got really sexy and like kinda, started started yeah. posting just videos that people would obviously watch because she's sexy, right? Right, right. stuff like so, that. So, so she's Sex got sells, this, baby. She's, <laughs> she's got this like weird. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can pull up a picture really quick. Um, but she's like sort of weeaboo, like anime yeah, girl, like, definitely weeaboo. You know, the, What's like the the, like, like anime, anime, we yeah. was an anime fan, yeah, for okay. sure. Uh, but like, I, cat I never, girl, you know, I'm imagining yeah. pigtails. Sometimes, and sometimes in some of her videos, I'm sure. But she yeah, has definitely got like, but... like she's kind of going for like a Japanese vibe. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. But she really like, she started as a YouTuber, you know, just doing like makeup tutorials and basic stuff like that, and doing gaming and stuff. Um, but Is she, she actually really, a gamer? I actually don't know. I just, I, I just figured I'm, she I'm was. I'm pretty sure she did. She definitely but plays games. She <laughs> whether she does. She them. hey, all girls kind of, play games. Yeah. <laughs> ah. She kind of broke the internet 
when she started selling jars of her oh, used bath water. Oh, that's right. What? That's what I was trying yes. to think of. What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, everybody was all over it because yeah. they love her. Yeah. Was like, really? Yeah. She's just yeah. selling bath water. Is there any DNA in water. there? Would there be DNA in there? That's a yeah, good question. I, mean, I don't possibly, know if anyone ever possibly, like, tested it. For sure. But Could see you going either way. Uh, Depends which jar. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So she, uh, I'm sure it. It. She's become really controversial. She actually, I just read an article earlier today. She has been nominated for a couple. You know, Pornhub does like the uh, what are they called? Like XMAs or something. Some it's like sort the, of the adult. Uh, I cannot think of what they're called, like, but it's like the adult like acting. You know, awards. Oh, gotcha. okay. Um, yeah. And she's been nominated for like a few of those, even though. They're not even. She's, like, she doesn't get naked in them. They right? are sexy videos, but like, but there is not, no she's outright not being, nudity. Yeah, there's no yeah. nudity. You there's there's never usually other men or anything like that. She's just a sexy chick doing things that people find sexy, even if they're yeah, normal yeah. activities. But there's weird stuff too. Like, um, one of her most viral videos is I. It has some sort of enticing title that sounds like a typical porn video title. But it's literally just her taking, like, she's dressed sexy and stuff, and she literally just takes a raw egg and, and like, bites, bites it. it. Yeah, And, like, for sure. lets it, like, So leak. stuff like that. Wait, is she, know. does she do ASMR? Pro- maybe. Possibly. She, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never yeah. seen her. Wait, are those actual tattoos? No, no, she's oh, okay. just writing on her face. Interesting. This is a really, really interesting theme. culture. It's almost like she found yeah, her like wild. her niche like attraction, you know, because there's but a certain so, kind of appeal. It's so niche. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be like there have niche to be guys McGeesh. that are like super into that kind of girl. Oh, oh. D- uh, psh, <laughs> that's yeah, there's a whole hell of Alex a lot and of them. I are dude. just like, oh, yeah, there are tons <laughs> of other guys. <laughs> no, there's a whole hell of a lot of them that are into. Well, that even me, I'm like, sure. it, it's a different kind of attraction. Like, I, I find her cute. I mean. That's yeah, like yeah. one picture, but like I've but seen like, like she's sexy very, anime girls yeah, yeah. for sure, and it's it's yeah. a different kind of appeal. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. Yeah, big time. Oh yeah, she's gorgeous. Then like in a really in a really gamer, weird like cartoon. Yeah, way. cartoon yeah. way. Yeah, for sure. And she yeah. pulls it off really well. That's she does. her goal. Yeah, I feel like she's yeah. what, what is this confidence? What do you think that is? Like it. You know, like everybody throws around the word, but I feel like everybody has like it's kind of an ambiguous word. Like everybody's got their own interpretation of like what the fuck confidence even is. It's got to be energy. It's, it's got to be energy. It's I, I think, I I think I notice it a lot. Like when I enter the gym, so going into the gym with like a huge amount of confidence, I think of that as like energy. So going into the gym and having like this massive amount of energy and this big confidence, if you want to say it, and like everybody notices when you're coming into the room like mm. it's just like you're everybody's like drawn to this guy or like this person this figure and they're just like this big energy in the room and like everybody wants to see what they're doing or like what like the th- type of things that like they're doing compared to like them i i really do think of confidence as like an energy and because like you can i can I can see in other people who like have more confidence in themselves than others just by like how they even like to express their thoughts and their ideas mm. and like just how they walk. It's really weird. Like I, uh, I, I kind of think of myself as like, uh, not like an empath, but like somebody who like really can perceive like people's feelings very well. Mm. And so like, I think very I, intuitive. Yeah. I think I can just like really, I think I can just intuitively, intuitively see like confidence in other people and in myself. And like, if I can tell that I am not as confident, I can personally, like I can physically exert more confidence. Do you know, does that make sense? Yeah, it almost, it it seems, and I would agree with this. It's, it's almost as if your description of confidence is like in constant flux. Yes, absolutely. And I I mean, I'll wake up some days and I'll just feel shitty. Yeah, no, no. And then, later on in the day i'm feeling on top of the world yeah usually it takes me uh like my walk to class is where like i build up a lot of my confidence Mm. so like walking like just walking to class and like going through like all these people like going through national and like these big streets i can be build up a lot of anxiety so i try and like shut everything out 
and just like tune into what I'm doing. And I try and I, I do that in like a lot of situations where I, I, I think of it as like a garbage can, like a garbage disposal. And I take everything and I go black and just sh- pull everything into it and just focus on like what I'm doing. And so like I think that can like I think that really like it just like puts me into this mat like this weird crazy focus that I've like just like come into like come into grips with like the last like maybe like five six months mm. so it's just been really interesting and like I, I apply that to everything like whether it's like my school or like walking or like the gym or anything where I feel like a low confidence or like not as much uh, like energy yeah not as much energy with myself I like shut everything out and I just drive into this one particular point so it's almost like a a state of consciousness or like a type of focus yes like a drive absolutely absolutely that is interesting and i and th- they say that like you uh like they say like working out and like doing things like that where you're like working on your personal self they say that like that increases like your conscience so that might go back to that same that same sort of uh topic i've I have, i've always thought just endorphins wise like mentally i feel right for example last weekend i didn't work out on friday and I work out on Saturday. Okay. And then I was feeling kind of down on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, t- and then I went in, and I, I, I should have been more self-aware, mm-hmm. but on Sunday night, I went, I hit the gym, and I left, and I was like, that's why I feel, like, that's why I felt the way I felt on Sunday. Like, I didn't feel it too much on Friday and Saturday, but I really felt it on Sunday to where I felt, like, lethargic and, like, just kind of drawn down and I low energy. I literally and, apply that to my yesterday. Um, I, after I shut my shoulder down for one day, the whole day, even when I was studying, I was like, man, this hurts, but I want to go to the fucking gym Mm. and like, I just want to be there in like these other people's like presence. Does that make sense? Like the energy that like I draw from the gym is like something I use every day. Like whether I'm like working out or not, I was like, maybe, maybe I just go to the gym and just like walk around the track or something, but just like that vibe. Like like, even if you don't do anything productive yourself. I just wanted to be there and that was th- that was the w- I have not I've never felt that before even like some days where I have like my off days or like some days I go on like vacation whatever but like that was the first day where I was like man I want to fucking be there like really bad and just so, to be there yeah just to be there and like my f- whole focus was off my entire focus for the whole day was off and like that's the only thing that I thought about which is really weird that is really interesting what do you think it is that kind of productivity or or just I, I think like-minded was, people or just the, the vibe of the gym or your associations with past good workouts and how you left feeling afterwards all the above even like uh adding in the, the social aspect i uh i really like to go to the gym to talk to friends so like when i see like you or i see like some of my other buddies like sean or guys i work with i'm like man hell yeah i see my buddy from work i'm like man that just totally uplifts you so my perception of what I think your perception is about me. Okay. And that's okay. really interesting because we, we kind of, uh, I don't know, our confidence is based off that, how we yeah. act, yeah. how we interact with that particular individual. Mm-hmm. That's how we, how we conduct ourselves, our mannerisms. Yeah, I think that, I think that can all like go back to confidence and like how you, how you like to express like it, I th- I think of it as like a personal energy that you're like giving off like like the like the big con- like the co- big confident like guy stereotype like big puffed up chest like head up like just like taking in everything like totally like stern face like and then you've got like the total opposite where you're like looking at the ground hunched back like not like smiling type thing like you're kind of like uh, kind of like breaking yourself off mm. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, both of those communicate a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to, like, back to like communication, like how you like present yourself. So like I try and go with the more like the the confidence vibe, to more of like more for myself. Um, if you could talk like more, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like to the Absolutely. top of it. Yeah, it's confusing because there's also a lot of philosophies that even describe themselves as neither theistic or atheistic, mm. which is confusing for a lot of people. Yeah, I haven't looked into that. But yeah, for sure. But like, why do you have to choose one, you know? Yeah. You don't necessarily, why? you know, because when you feel like you have to choose one, you're subscribing to someone's definition of what you know mm. theism is. And you could just go off of that definition, but then usually it involves uh, like God 
And then you have to describe uh, what that means. That's like the most ambiguous like, word in the dictionary. It really is. Right? It doesn't mean anything anymore. It means whatever, you know, because pantheists call upon God, whereas, you know, you know, Buddhists that don't have a God kind of have a God. Mm. When they talk about the, the way they talk about reality, even though they're non theistic or whatever, right. the way they talk about reality and like the path of wisdom and where it comes from is pretty fucking godlike. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's confusing when you try to make those words. Like, uh, I know, like Zen Buddhism, for instance, wouldn't describe themselves as either theistic or non theistic. They describe it as neither. Interesting. Yeah. But still sure. not agnostic. Not agnostic either, but, mm. you know, like a, that a, is a little, fully little. That is interesting. That's interesting. I mm. feel like I don't fully understand that. Yeah, it's Not tricky. To... It's because like, yeah, the the non dualistic schools of thought uh, usually describe themselves as neither, because uh, you know, when there's no dualism, then you can't describe it as anything. You know, is it reality? Is it God? Is all of it God or all of it reality? It's really like, what, what does that even mean? It's just words that we're making up. Maybe there's a so. limitation within my my reasoning for thinking this through, but it's it, my my interpretation of it is on the question of is there a God or is there, there a God? Am I theistic or am I not? Mm-hmm. I would say I don't believe there is a God. I don't believe there's not a God. But then that draws me to the conclusion that I would have to be agnostic and simply I don't know. <laughs> right on. So uh, that's I mean, interesting. Even if, even if you feel like you know what you believe, uh, I could see you still landing in between. Like I don't describe myself as agnostic, but I don't say that I'm a theist or a non-theist. You know, those they're just both ways of looking at reality are are too limiting for sure. Uh, definitely. To say you're yeah. neither does that imply that you're both simultaneously? Uh, n- well, at least in my case, no. Also, uh, back to Buddhism again, I hate to always draw upon it, but a lot of things they say is like, uh, awakened mind is, is not existent, but it's not non-existent. It's not neither existent and neither exist. And it's not neither, uh, existent <laughs> or non-existent. And it's also not both existent and non-existent. The whole idea is it's beyond description. You can never find a form to put it to what it actually is because it'll just end up being bullshit and limiting it from its infinite capacity, essentially. Yeah, I understand that, but that still draws me to the conclusion of of, I don't know. Yeah, of I don't know. Yeah, for sure. And you could go that way. And if that's that's how you see, like, agnosticism, even if, uh, yeah, it's tricky when... uh, yeah, if you just don't know exactly how I view agnosticism is more of uh, like I don't know whether there's a god or not. I almost think of it's like a question agnosticism for me, and maybe I have the wrong idea of it. Whether is what I'm trying to describe is uh, no, I know exactly what I believe, but I can't call it a god, and I can't call it not a god mm. for sure. Would you I, say that I, lies I somewhere like in the middle? Yeah, yeah, that's just sort of like broadly spiritualism. Broadly spiritualism, yeah. yeah. I mean, that yeah, that could be. Am I thinking about this way sure. too like binary? Possibly, or like, like what, too much what duality. I'm to, like, yeah, too like my dualistic. perceptions kind of too dualistic, for tainted sure. with dualistic thinking, like this mm-hmm. or that. But then yeah. I I don't know this or that, so I'm almost avoiding the question by saying I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see where it's. I'm pussying yeah. out, man. I'm yeah. pussying out. <laughs> we all are. It's okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like the topic of religion is uh, notorious for that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just because the last ten minutes of waking consciousness, whenever mm-hmm. I shift into like a dream state, mm-hmm. I usually dream about something I thought about in the last ten minutes. I've been trying to do that lately. Really? It's like it's almost like almost kind of lucid dream by attempting yeah. to like manipulate your thoughts right mm-hmm. before. Yeah. They say they say that you do something like that. Like, whereas, like, the, the thoughts that you have and perceive going into, uh, like, a sleep is, like, something that your your brain, like, kind of, like, is still, like, stuck up on or something like that. So, mm. it just, like, just, like, spins on that topic, maybe. Because I know, like, okay, so, um, going to, okay, if you go to sleep listening to, like, a certain, like, type of music, that, like, affects your, like, the dreams that you have. Okay. So, like, I think that might also play back to, like, your mood. That is weird, yeah. 
like, if, okay, so I, I can specifically say this. Okay, so um, I was having some really difficult times last semester, like through Christmas, right? So I was going to bed in these very upset states, like where they'd be really mad and really sad. Okay. okay. So my dreams were direct uh, reflections of how I was feeling. So, like, my dreams were directly affected by my mood going into them. Interesting. So, like, they would be specifically about, like, that topic that I was, like, really upset about and, like, really frustrated with. And I would – it was, like, like, a span of about a week where I was having, like, these really deep – it felt like lucid dreams, but I, I don't think they were because I wasn't as hyper – like, I, I wasn't as active as I, I should have been in a lucid dream. But it was really, it was really unique, like how vivid and how deep the even the feelings were in my dream, how close they were to reality. Wow, that's the weird part about dreams too, is they they almost solve your problems for you. Like the expression, yeah, just go sleep on it, go sleep on it. Like there's some truth in that, honestly. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever gone to like did any of those nights that you went to bed upset? Did you ever wake up feeling a lot better? Uh, no, no, never. I would always wake up probably worse than I went to probably more safe than I went to bed. Really? Yeah. That's surprising to me. But I, I would, so m my, uh, my brother's really big into uh, kind of like a, like Buddhist, uh, like Buddhist monk type uh, philosophy. Right. So I would, I, w I always go to my brother for advice. Always. He's a couple years older than me. I feel like he has just like a little more experience and stuff with reality. So I go to him with like stuff like this and he would, he would try and explain to me how like, uh, kind of like how I was saying earlier, like your dreams are, like reflections of what you want to happen. So these dreams that I were I was having were direct reflections of like what I wanted but could not have. Interesting. That was just like really weird. I've never thought of dreams to be like that. Really? That's really interesting. Carl Jung talking about the concept of self and basically how he defines the concept of self and how you define who you are, or who you think you are is or maybe, maybe it's not an interpretive definition. But anyway, he defines self as you uh, existing across time. And the concept of potential is pretty much a manifestation of your like future self. Mm -hmm. And whenever you are in this present moment and you're doing something that's meaningful, that meaning is alleviating the the suffering that comes at the price of being of of existing of being and to alleviate alleviate the suffering that comes at the price of being you have to find purpose you have to find fulfillment you have to find meaning you don't have to necessarily but that meaning will be used as a guide and Carl Jung's interpretation is that the meaning of the present moment is your future self almost communicating with your current self and again using wait, it wait, as like a just guide is that time travel right there wait, that's his interpretation uh, <laughs> i don't know if this goes back down like physics because a lot of people yeah. a lot of physicists argue that that time is not is non-linear so i don't know if that's almost i don't know it sounds it's kind of it sounds very abstract but this is also coming from one of the greatest thinkers that this world has ever known which What's is his the name? irony uh carl young carl young definitely have to look into that so it's really interesting it's a weird concept so you you agree with his view of of the well, world what jordan peterson says is, and i i agree i mean i've thought into it a fair amount i haven't tried to pick it apart which i probably should kind of like ponder the thought and be like well what else could it be because obviously that's an interpretation of what the sensation of meaning or fulfillment or joy is in that present moment of doing something that you're fully engaged with and you're deriving that purpose from. But I don't, it, it, Jordan Peterson says, I don't know if you can come to a better conclusion than that. And I personally haven't, but I, what I do know is there is something so, again, existentially, existentially satisfying about the, the feeling of purpose, of meaning, and it seems to me that what that experience is is that it completely dissipates the concept the subjective concept of time and your place in in space time 
it space seems to time. just seems to just completely just make time just just I don't know. You just kind of forget about the concept of time. Like when you're fully engaged, fully into something, it just it seems to make time cease to exist almost. That's my that's my interpretation it's not, it of meaning. Sounds like a scientific nirvana type thing, like you know, kind of finding your fullest self. You know, is that am I off or is that what you're saying? Is like when you're finally at your. That's a cool interpretation. Because you're you're very at peace with your that, experience that's what you of were life, saying though, right? It was. I would say I'd say that's accurate. Yeah. Because I mean, like, I, I'm not entirely sure what Nirvana means, but isn't that? That's, am I maybe I'm off? It, is that isn't that kind of like the final pillar? I don't know. Maybe I'm just like off. the final pillar of consciousness of like enlightenment. Yeah, exactly. That's how I've always seen Nirvana, like synonymous yeah. with enlightenment. Yeah. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but hopefully we. I'll look it up later, but that's what I initially thought was kind of that idea. I don't know. I just I think meaning is like the most sustainable form of joy. Yeah. 